You and your friends are gathered around the campfire. It's getting late, and it's pitch dark out here in the woods. You're already on the edge because you're worried that someone at home will notice that you're gone. In fact, you were just thinking about leaving when one of your friends has the bright idea to swap scary stories and urban legends. You can't leave now or your friends will know you're scared, so you tell yourself not to worry, they're just stories. There's nothing to be scared of, right? I'll go first, said the friend who had this brilliant idea in the first place. Have you guys heard the one about the lady who came back from vacation? No? Okay, so it goes like this. Once there was this lady who went away to some tropical place for a vacation or something. While she was there, she fell asleep on the beach one day and when she woke up a few hours later, the side of her face was burning. She assumed it was a sunburn and she was careful to use extra sunscreen on her face for the rest of her trip. But the burning feeling kept getting worse and worse and by the time she got back home, the whole side of her face was swollen. She made a doctor's appointment and by the time her appointment rolled around a few days later, a huge, ugly, painful boil had popped up on her cheek. Her doctor looked at it closely before deciding that he had better cut it open and drain whatever fluid was inside. But when he took his scalpel and carefully cut into her boil, nothing came out. No blood, no pus, nothing. The doctor leaned in to look closer and he noticed something that stopped him in his tracks. The boil seemed to be moving. He tentatively reached out with his scalpel and prodded the boil and out crawled thousands of baby spiders. The group breaks out in shouts of no way and gross, as you all imagine how it would feel to have spiders crawling out of your face. One of your friends isn't impressed though. That's nothing you guys, wait until you hear this one. A man in India took a new job working on a construction crew in the busy city of New Delhi, a few hours away from his home village. The man had a large family to take care of and he'd been drawn to the city by the promise of higher wages. Although it pained him to be away from his wife and children, he was comforted by the fact that he would soon be earning enough to provide for them. Best of all, the job included room and board so more of his hard-earned money could be saved for his family. When he arrived for his first day on the job, he was shown to a small blue and white house. This must be my new home, he thought. He happily settled in and waited for the work to begin. But after a few days of waiting around the house, with no sign of work starting anytime soon, the man started to become nervous. Before he had a chance to do anything about it though, two masked men forced their way into his bedroom early one morning. One of the masked men held him down while the other one forced a needle into his arm. The last thing the man remembered before slipping into unconsciousness was a feeling of pure terror. Several hours later, the man woke up groggy and in pain. He was laying on a cot in the hospital. He was confused and disoriented. His right side was burning with pain. He lifted his shirt and looked down at his body and saw a large, bloody surgical bandage covering half his side. And that's when the man knew that there had never been a construction job at all. He'd been tricked by a gang of illegal organ dealers and they'd stolen his kidney. As your friends once again express their disbelief and disgust, another friend is eager for his turn to share. Okay, that was gruesome for sure, but this one is really creepy. Do you guys know the legend of Bloody Mary? As the legend goes, if you're brave enough, you can summon the vengeful spirit of Bloody Mary, a woman who was executed for witchcraft hundreds of years ago. My cousin told me about one of her friends who tried to summon Bloody Mary and my cousin says her friend hasn't been the same since that day. To summon Bloody Mary, you need to stand in front of a mirror in a dark room and say her name 13 times. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. My cousin's friend and another girl decided to give it a try together, and as they stood in the bathroom chanting and spinning, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. The room started to grow cold, and soon they began to feel a malevolent presence. They kept going, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. And as they completed their 13th repetition, they turned to look at the mirror. There in the mirror was the face of a woman. She stared at them with hatred in their eyes before she opened her mouth and began screaming at them. Why have you summoned me? She yelled, and her hands reached out toward them. Suddenly my cousin's friend screamed in pain as angry red marks appeared on her face. Bloody Mary scratched her. They ran out of the bathroom screaming in terror, but my cousin's friend's brother wasn't buying it. As he walked past the bathroom, he said, you guys are such babies, I don't believe in Bloody Mary. Almost as soon as the words were out of his mouth, he tripped over his own feet fell down and broke his leg. My cousin has been to that girl's house many times since. She still swears there's an evil feeling in that bathroom to this day. After that story, there's less laughs and bravado. A few friends chuckle and try to look brave, but most of them are looking a little less sure that this was a good idea after all. But not everyone's done with the scary stories. Before you can suggest a change in topic, another friend pipes up. Hey, guys, I got a good one. Late one night, a couple was driving home along a dark country road. The road was deserted and they were far from town, so they were surprised when they noticed a hitchhiker up ahead. As they got closer, they could tell that it was a very young, very pretty woman. 
The wife convinced her husband to stop and pick up the girl, telling him that they couldn't leave her out here all alone. They pulled over and the girl climbed into the back seat of the car. They asked her where she was headed and she gave them directions to her parents' house in the nearby town. She thanked them profusely for picking her up before falling silent. It was late, they were in the middle of nowhere and they figured she must have been walking for a while so they assumed she was tired and had fallen asleep. Fifteen minutes later, the car pulled up in front of the house she had given them directions to. The wife turned around to wake up the young woman, but when she looked into the back seat, it was empty. Where'd she go? She asked her husband in a panic. I don't know, he replied. We didn't stop anywhere along the way, not even at a stop sign. And we would have noticed if she'd opened the car door, she just disappeared. They were shaken, but it was late and they were tired too. Maybe they were imagining things, so they headed home and tried their best to put it out of their minds. And they did, for a few days, until the husband stumbled across an online newspaper article that chilled him to the bone. The article was about a young woman who had disappeared from this town, and the picture showed an older couple, her parents, standing on the front porch holding a photo of their daughter. The photo looked remarkably like the young hitchhiker they'd picked up just a few days ago, and the house they were standing in front of was most definitely the house they'd taken her to. But most disturbing of all was the date on the article. The woman had disappeared 10 years ago to the day that they picked up the hitchhiker, and she hadn't been seen since. As soon as he finishes the story, the group starts arguing. That's a made-up story. No, it's not. I swear it happened to my aunt and uncle. No way. I heard that one before. Your buddies continue to bicker about the truth of these urban legends, but one of your friends isn't participating. In fact, he's been suspiciously quiet all night. The friend who originally suggested this fun game has noticed the other friend's silence, and he starts calling him out. So why are you so quiet? What are you scared? Don't tell me you're creeped out by a few made-up stories. The friend slowly looks around the circle at all of you, and finally he says, You guys want a scary story? I'll give you one. A true one, too. It was last summer, and I had stayed up late playing video games in my room. Must have fallen asleep playing video games because I woke up around 3 a.m. and I was laying on my back, facing the wrong way in my bed. As soon as I opened my eyes, I immediately knew something was wrong. I felt this wave of terror and dread come over me. I had the strongest feeling that someone was in my room, staring at me. I tried to turn my head to look toward the corner where I felt the eyes on me, but I couldn't move. I was totally paralyzed, trapped in my own body, unable to move even a finger, even though my brain was screaming at me to run. As I was laying there in full panic mode, trying to breathe and desperately trying to move, I suddenly saw something moving out of the corner of my eye. My heart was racing as I started to be able to make out the figure of a tall, shadowy man. I couldn't make out his features. All I could see was blackness, an unnatural blackness in the shape of a tall man wearing a hat, and he was slowly moving toward me. The last thing I remember is the tall figure leaning over my bed and then feeling a crushing pressure on my chest like someone was sitting on me before I passed out. When I woke up in the morning, I was still laying in the same awkward position, but the shadowy man was gone and the feeling of being watched had disappeared. Still, that experience stuck with me and I haven't been able to fall asleep in my room ever since. I've been practically living on my couch. As he finishes his tale, the group is eerily silent. Everyone seems really freaked out now. Something about this last story has really changed the mood around the fire. Even though you had no intention of joining in on the storytelling, you feel the need to break the silence and you find yourself saying, hey guys, what about the, the hook story? You know, the one about the guy with the hook? Uh oh, you hate public speaking. You were hoping someone else knew this urban legend and would jump in and start telling the story, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Everyone's staring at you, so you just start talking. It's, um... An, an urban legend about, about this guy, right? So, so this guy, he was driving down the road one night and he sees a hitchhiker, so he stops and picks him up and the driver asks the hitchhiker, where are you headed? And the hitchhiker says, to your grave because I'm a murderer. And he rolls up his sleeve to show that he's got a hook for a hand and the driver's like, no way, I too am a murderer and I only picked you up to murder you. And he shows the hitchhiker his own hook hand and they lived happily ever after or whatever. Your friends all stare at you for a moment over the fire before the whole group breaks out laughing. You laugh right along with them. They all know you're not usually the scary story type and you're just happy to have that tension broken for now. Your story may not have been very scary, but you have to admit, some of those urban legends will keep you up at night. If you thought this video was spooky, be sure and check out our other videos like this creepy one titled True Scary Stories, or perhaps you'll like this other video. You might not be able to sleep after hearing these urban legends, but we can at least keep you entertained while you're wide awake and terrified. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.